This is gonna be the video you wish you had five years ago. I wanna show you how to design your dream life. We got the overhead camera ready to rock, and I think we can do it in five steps. Here we go. Step number one, the dream. Let's just say you're right here. Like any journey, you have a starting point. We'll call this the 1.0 U now. Very first thing we have to do is get crystal clear on who the 2.0 version of you is. We'll call this True North. Now let's take two examples of what this looks like. So we have some stories and this isn't just some intellectual concept, okay? The first case study, let's call Mary. Mary's true north is she wants to one day run a seven figure online business, inspiring women through holistic health coaching. The second story, let's call Justin. His goal, he's always felt it in his heart of hearts that he wants to be a music producer. His true north, the craziest dream that he can conceive in his 20s, is 5 million downloads on Spotify, he's headlining festivals, he's producing the music and living the life of his dreams. It's called Dream Life for a reason. So for you, what is your dream? A lot of people, they have what's called dream suppression. They feel like they're just a collection of what's happened to them in their past, and it's trivial to try and go for something big. Oh, I gotta be realistic. Oh, I'm too old. Oh, I'm too young. Oh, it's too much work. Oh, I don't know how. Understand that all those right there, the things that stop the most people, are nothing but a story. People worry about being qualified for this. How am I gonna have a seven-figure business and teach people holistic health? I see the DJs playing at these festivals and I'm like, ah, oh, it seems so far away, what the heck? There's a quote by Steve Jobs, hashtag think different. And I just finished reading his biography, amazing book. It's like, what, 600 pages, it's a beefcake. Talk about a guy who had no dream suppression. This dude revolutionized six different industries, computers, music, phones, animation through Pixar, and two others I can't remember. And this book talks about stories of people who are close to him and how did he build the first trillion dollar company to ever exist in the world. He was some 20 something year old hippie. Everyone around him is like, dude, you're crazy. You stink, you only eat fruit and vegetables and you're going to like meditation retreats in India. Yeah, right, dude, you're gonna build a trillion dollar company. He had something called a reality distortion field. Kind of made him an asshole, but he got things done. Because because he distorted reality, he became delusional. He was the furthest thing from realistic. He'd go to his engineering team and say, you know, this phone, it's shit. It has a button. We're gonna remove the button. Oh yeah, and I know that's gonna take two years, but you're gonna do it in six months. Time and time again, they would. Everyone you admire doesn't suppress their dreams, even if it sounds absolute batshit crazy when they say it. So what's your reality distortion field? What's the craziest dream that you can come up with? The ones crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Now that you have your dream, you're ready for step number two. You're about to embark on what is called the hero's journey. There's a marketing principle I wanna share with you and it's extremely relevant to what we're talking about. It's literally the best program design advice out there. So if you're thinking about designing a program, whether it's fitness, whether it's wealth, whether it's personal development, anything, amateur people just say, here's a bunch of information on this and now go do it. And that's why most programs suck. Good programs see this at a macro level and they zoom in on these micro, steps. It's not one gigantic thing that they have to do, but it's a series of little steps that go in sequence. There's probably five to 10 steps if you break it down. And it's the same thing with your goals, same thing with your life, getting to your true north, the 2.0 you. So what are the five to 10 steps that if you took in everything in a perfect universe, when as planned, would literally get you from where you are now to where you want to be? So in the case of Mary, who wants to be the holistic seven figure health coach, what are her steps? Step one, start making content and getting her message out there. Step two, maybe it's grow an audience to her first 50 to 100,000 people. Step three, monetize ka-ching ka -ching so she can leave her full-time job. Step four, scale that thing to 250,000 people watching her where she's making 500 grand a year. Step five, she's speaking on stages and now she can actually help people do the exact journey that she went on. You can also go in reverse order. Okay, this is the crazy school I have. What are the steps before that? So in the case of our F-boy DJ, Justin, who wants to be selling out festivals, playing on stages, millions of streams on Spotify, his steps would be produce original music, write the first album, Spotify streams at 500K, play in some festivals, getting offers, doing it full time, headlining EDC uh, or a big music festival. Now look, you could even do an exercise. What are the actions that led you to this state right now? It's okay to be brutally honest with where you're starting. I'd rather you like kind of beat yourself up here and be like, dang, that's a hell of a journey to get there. Mary, our example here, the holistic health seven figure business owner one day, she might see an Instagram ad of some person saying, 
I, you know, I went from broke to being a millionaire in 12 months. And if you buy my program, I'll teach you how to do the same. And so in her mind, she's like, okay, broke to millionaire in 12 months here. Uh, yeah, okay, this is gonna take a year. But in reality, the ad didn't tell her that that person had an extra five years experience learning the marketing skills, learning the business, posting content, learning ads that allowed them to go from broke to a millionaire in 12 years. Did it really take that person 12 months to go from broke to a millionaire or did it really take them five years? Sometimes comparing yourself to other people's finished product instead of the first draft is a bit misleading. It's okay if this journey is gonna take you a year, two, three, four, five years. That's what it really takes. But ultimately, is there anything more important than the 2.0 U and the true north? You might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, why don't people, I mean, if the steps are right in front of them, okay, it's so clear, like I see my path, uh, why, why do most people quit? I have one word for you to answer that question. Certainty. If I had a crystal ball right now, closest thing I got, this giant crystal shows your future and we shook it together. Right here. It was like a magic eight ball and it showed you your life that everything went according to this plan, all five to 10 steps. And you were that DJ. You did have that seven figure business. You did have the 2.0 U, the life of your dreams. It went according to plan. Would you doubt yourself at all along this journey? How trivial would your self doubts feel? How pointless would it feel on days where you just don't feel like it? Would you pivot? Would you question what you're here on this planet to do? Or would you work 10 times harder because you're like, holy crap, every step I take, this happens faster and faster and faster and I'm getting there faster. Guys, that's what being a visionary is. You have to operate as if you saw your life in five years from now and you have to operate with that certainty that it's gonna happen. You know, people think, okay, well, if I knew for sure, Clark, it was gonna happen, then I'd have the confidence to make it happen. But it's reversed. If you have the confidence to make it happen, you didn't let up and you don't quit, then for certain, it's gonna happen. <sighs> Getting fired up here. It's time for us to address the elephant in the room. You're like, well, Clark, easier said than done. Shit gets real, life happens, things come up that are unexpected. How do you handle those? Most people fail, not because it's not clear, not because they don't want it bad enough, but because they get distracted. They go on a detour or a setback. Now these are different, but I'll explain. Let's say you're on this path right here, you get to step one, mission accomplished. You go to step two, you're good. But then right here, you get drawn away to something else. This is what we'll call a detour. You could view them as good. When your GPS reroutes, sometimes it's because it finds a faster route to your destination. When I was in my 20s, I pivoted a ton of times, you know, and I learned a ton about marketing and business and speaking and went to all these events and met cool people. But ultimately it took me off the path of getting to my goal right here of like the seven figure dream coaching business and doing what I really love, which is what we're doing here, million subscribers. I didn't waste two years, that's not the right word for it, but it definitely uh, people who started with me here passed me by because they just kept going on the same path versus when you're pivoting and you're questioning yourself and all these things come up. Another detour is relationships, especially if you're an entrepreneur, man. Having an unsupportive relationship can set you back because it takes so much of your emotional energy. It can drain you or it can be a distraction. And so what we could call that is maybe you get to here and then you have an unsupportive partner come in your life and they take you on setbacks. So let's talk about Justin and Mary. Mary, our holistic health coach of one day, seven figure business, maybe she's doing it, she makes content and then life happens. She's in a relationship, she gets married, she has a kid. Kids are great, family is awesome. That's one of the coolest things in life in my opinion. So maybe her new path, she realizes, oh, Holistic health is bigger than just the individual. It stems out into the family. It stems out into your kids. And maybe now with her experience of being a mom, she starts talking about those topics and attracts other moms to her content. And she realizes that maybe she doesn't just wanna be a holistic health coach, she wants to be a holistic health coach for moms. See how that detour unraveling, leaning into it, not resisting it, sometimes opens you up to better opportunities that you can't even predict right now. When you look at Steve Jobs' story, he got fired from the company that he started. He was so difficult to work with and people you know, said he was leading it in a terrible direction. Here's what happened. He goes on and starts a different company. You know what that company was? Pixar. Partners with Disney, makes Toy Story, revolutionizes the digital industry of animation, also starts his other company next. Different than Apple, but pretty much the same thing. His journey goes on and Apple one day calls him because they're in trouble. I believe it was they were 90 days away from bankruptcy. So they say, dang, we don't really have any other choice. We gotta give the smelly dude Steve a call. And they do, which they end up acquiring. You know what company? 
next. So they used the technology that he had there and incorporated it in Apple. Steve turns the company around and the rest is history. I mean, we're using their products. You might even be watching me on one right now. All those detours ended up leading to something great. Justin gets pressured from a girlfriend. Dude, I'm gonna be a DJ? Come on, man. What, are you gonna go to clubs forever? You want that to be your lifestyle? You know, just bring in some income. You can still do your music thing on the side, but you know, you should really like act your age at 25 and, and start making some money. And pretty soon he comes home from work and he's so emotionally drained because he doesn't actually like his job he starts looking at the music production equipment and resenting it. He doesn't have the emotional energy to try. Before he knows it, he's 28 and he hasn't produced much. He got stuck on step three and he starts to backslide. He starts to feel the pressure of everyone telling him to be realistic and settle. And before you know it, he's right here, no closer to his goal. And hey, if Justin's happy and he shifts his priorities and he's really in his heart truly saying, I don't want that goal anymore. I don't want to be a DJ. You know, that was just something I wanted in my early 20s, but for me now, not for me. Then that's a win, okay? And he has a totally new path. Maybe he changes it all together. But if he's brutally honest in his heart of hearts and he knows that that's what he's supposed to be doing and he's going to regret it one day not going for it, then that's a setback. Step four. I don't know about you, but on planes, I'm the guy who stares at the screen in front of him on the map feature. Okay, I don't know what it is. I love geography and I'm like zooming in. I'm getting the wind speed. I'm looking at how fast we're going and we'll be going from here. I am in Phoenix to my home in Seattle and I'm watching it the whole time, like two hours and 30 minutes of this map. I got a problem and it always makes me think how, yes, it looks like we're going in a straight line from Phoenix to Seattle. But if you zoomed in at the smallest level, like if you were the pilot, they're constantly readjusting. So it's not necessarily a straight line, it's a zigzag, but it's in those readjustments that they actually end up with the same destination. Success is not about commitment as much as it is about recommitment. One personal story on recommitment, just so you know, like this stuff I've seen in my life, it's not just arbitrary theories I'm sharing on YouTube. I know the power of recommitment firsthand. Since I was 12 years old and I heard my first Sum 41 CD coming back from a summer camp, my dream was to become a drummer. I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to tour the world. I would go to all the shows. I would listen to hardcore, metalcore music, everything. Eventually I graduated college and I thought, to be fully honest, I took too many detours and college was too big of one. My time has passed. My time has gone. And this dream right here, you might as well crumple it up and throw it away. I lost all motivation to drum really until I went to a warp tour and I saw my buddy. He also posted some drum covers on YouTube. He steps out on stage and he has the exact thing I want. He's playing to a crowd, he's doing what he loves, he gets to tour, he gets to perform, and he gets to drum. I remember feeling so envious, was watching him do the dream that I knew I could have done, but I quit on. What, am I gonna be 55, bitter, looking back at myself, wondering why I didn't go for it? That scared me to death, regret. And right then and there, I recommitted to this dream to the 2.0. Within 60 days of recommitting, I got a tweet out of nowhere from a band that saw one of my drum covers that I had posted eight years ago. They said, hey, we need a drummer. Your video was so memorable because it was kind of cringy. Uh, do you want to fly to LA? We're taking a gamble on this one, but we desperately need a drummer. I flew to LA, I auditioned, got the gig, did a tour and the rest was history. Since then we did multiple US tours, got to live in a tour bus, got to play on Conan O'Brien, got to tour all around the world, Germany, download festival, 20, 30,000 people. I pinch myself every single time I get to go on that stage. I almost wanna cry. This shit works. I'm convinced that something metaphysical happens when you recommit. When you recommit, you're sending a signal to the universe that you want this, that this is true, and you're gonna do what it takes to get it. The universe, God, the quantum realm, whatever word you wanna use, conspires with you once it knows that you're serious. We can't prove that, but that's why it's called faith. What do you need to recommit to? Step five, you reach the 2.0 version of you. It is so worth it. So let's finish this out with our two people, Mary and Justin. Mary has the dream. She has the journey. She knows there's setbacks and detours, but she recommits. She arrives at this 2.0 version of her. Her friends look at her lifestyle and they wonder, how can you do that? There's a quote that says, entrepreneurs do what others won't so they can live a life that others can't. Meanwhile, Justin quit. 
I was on tour and I was talking to someone after the show and it really reminds me of Justin. He comes up to me and he's like, dude, I love the fact that you're drumming. I got so inspired tonight. He was almost in tears. And I'm like, oh, so you drum too. You know, drummer to drummer. That's cool, man. How long you been drumming for? Ah, uh, yeah, you know, I've started when I was 12. Dude, me too. You still drumming? He gets really serious. He says, um, no, heavy sigh. <sighs> in fact, I can barely look at my drums because every time I pass that room, it reminds me of what I could have done but I didn't. The dude can't even pick up his drumsticks because he's so defeated in his mind of all the failures, to which I would show him this video. The funny thing about success is that it's not random. Yeah, there's luck. Yeah, there's people who are born with a better hand dealt than you are. But if this is what you want, just focusing on any time that you failed or how life is unfair, does that matter at all? The sobering truth, guys, everything is not your fault. Yeah, that girl was a narcissist and took you off the path. Yeah, your parents didn't support you. Yeah, you weren't born in the best environment. None of that is your fault and no one's blaming you for that. But it damn sure is your responsibility. Everything in life is your responsibility. What's a more inspiring story? Someone that had everything handed to them and it all worked out. There was no challenges and he breezed through these five steps easily towards his goal and He's, you know, rich and famous now. That doesn't have any adversity. That's not inspiring. What's inspiring is the recommitment, is committing to this 2.0 vision, is going for it and sticking it out for the long haul. This is the exact process that we design with you in our metamorphic coaching program. We literally take you from step one all the way through these five steps and help you create this vision. So if you're blanking right now and you're like, I don't even know who the heck that 2.0 is. I don't even know where to start. Like this video inspired me, but I, fe I felt something. I just don't know how. Then I want to invite you to apply. Don't just wait don't think about it apply down below for a free call with one of our coaches they can have a conversation one-on-one -on -one. it's 100 free with you and at least talk about this game plan even if you don't go through with our program and the people that do i've seen this in our program literally going through these steps in order and when they get to the end they're like holy crap i know exactly what to do and they're almost in tears because having that level of clarity for the first time i've seen it in my own life that is what it's all about something one of my coaches said he said clark if not now when and if not you who i believe in you go crush this stop settling start living see you guys